Okay, let's go ahead and solve this equation, and hopefully we're going to solve this thing together, meaning that if you are in any sort of algebra course, you should be able to solve this equation. But if you're watching this video just to learn how to solve an equation like this, well, then I'm going to help you out because I'm going to explain exactly step-by-step -step, how to solve this type of equation. This type of equation is called a linear equation, and it's something you definitely have to master if you're taking any sort of algebra course. But uh, I'm going to encourage... Now, uh, those of you out there that think you might know how to solve this, just pause the video. It'll take you about a, maybe a minute. Get a piece of paper out, pencil, and work through and put your final answer in the comment section. We'll see how well uh, you will have done with this uh, one question quiz. That's what this is. But if you could do uh, this prompt, then that's a pretty good indication that, you know, you've got some uh, good skills going here. But uh, I'm going to get into this prompt. Uh, in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and over those years I've come to one conclusion. That is all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, it requires a student to do uh, the work, okay? Take notes, do the homework, study, all that kind of good stuff. The second thing it requires uh, is clear and understandable math instruction, great in math instruction, you know, the type of math instruction that is engaging, easy to follow, easy to understand, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, definitely check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave links to all my stuff in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. If you homeschool, I have excellent middle school and high school homeschool uh, math courses that you can explore. And again, I'm gonna leave um, uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this problem. If you don't want to see the solution uh, just yet because you want to work on this, that's awesome. Pause the video, but I'm going to get going now. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the solution. I already wrote out all the work. Now, before you even start explaining things, anytime you solve anything in math, especially equations, you want to go one step at a time, step by step by step by step by step by step by step, like so. So your teacher can grade what you're doing. They're like, okay, you got the prom, you did that good, you did this good, you did that right, you did this, da, 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 da. They need to read, okay, and see you're basically telling the story of how you went from the problem to the solution. If you don't have this work done nice and neat and clear and everything else, then you know your teacher won't really be able to understand what you are you know trying to communicate. And it's a, uh, critical, okay, that you write out all these steps. Even if you make an error, let me just do this real quick. Let's say you make an error on this step right there. But your, your teacher is like, okay, they just made a simple little mistake. I'm not gonna penalize them too much because the rest of the work is very good. You could still get a good amount of partial credit uh, for problems, but you gotta, you know, do the right thing. Be super neat, go one step at a time, be uh, organized, etc. Okay, and that's the way you, uh, you should be doing your homework problems, writing your notes, okay, it, it, it does count. And, um, okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this problem. All right, so the first thing here, here's our problem. Anytime you see parentheses or something like this, that's an indication with like a number on the outside of it, uh, like so, that's an indication that we have to use the distributive property. So if you don't know what the distributive property is, you need to master that because it's used everywhere in algebra. And basically, I'm going to have to take this number here and multiply by these uh, uh, internal terms. Okay, so anytime you have a sum or difference, again, uh, you're t we're talking about the distributive property here if you're confused about what I'm doing, but this is the first step, okay? So anytime there are parentheses, and there could be multiple parentheses going on in this equation here, there's only one, do that first. Okay, so here we're going to do this negative two-thirds times 6x minus 1, and let's take a look at the result of that. All right, so negative two-thirds times 6x is negative 4x. Now, if you don't know how to deal with fractions, okay, if you, you know, you shouldn't be doing this in your mind. Kind of go off to the side with your paper, go, okay, negative two thirds times six, or six over one, three goes into two, six, two, two times two is uh, four, so that's negative four. Whatever the case is, do this like uh, off to the side. Don't do this in the middle of your work, okay? All right, so just, you know, of course, you're going to have to be absolutely certain that you have 
the product right here when you're doing this math. Okay, but again, do this uh, off to the side. All right, so that's gonna be negative four X and then negative two thirds times a negative one is a positive two thirds. So that's my first step using the distributive property. And then I'm just gonna write out the rest of the problem right here. Okay, so for me as a teacher, I can be like, oh, negative four X uh, uh, plus two thirds. Okay, they know how to do the distributive property. That's very good. I'm happy with that. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so here, the next step is the following. Matter of fact, let me go up here real quick. All right, so when you're solving equations, remember the main idea is to get all your variable terms to the left and all your numbers to the right. And uh, if this problem is beyond kind of where you're at, Definitely check out some of my other videos on one-step equations, two-step equations, or maybe check out one of my full algebra, pre-algebra courses, whatever you might be at, whatever algebra level you might be at. But anyways, you're going to have to get all the variable terms like the 4x's, the 1 3rd x's to the left-hand side, and all the numbers to the right-hand side, okay? So that's going to be the um, kind of the game plan here to solve this equation. So I have some choices. I could subtract... Um, this one third x from both sides of the equation, I can link it up over there. And then I'm gonna have to get this positive two thirds over to this side with that seven. So I could kind of directly just work with fractions, but a much easier way uh, to uh, move forward with this problem is this. We Here we have fractions two thirds, and here I have one thirds. I'm like, you know what, I don't wanna deal with fractions. We can just get rid of the uh, fractions right now by multiplying by uh, the lowest common denominator, Multi multiplying the entire equation by the lowest common denominator. And this is pretty easy because here we have negative four, but really that's negative four over one. And this seven, that's seven over one. So if we look at all the denominators, one, three, three, and one, what's the LCD? Well, uh, it is three. Okay. Pretty simple there. So if I multiply the entire equation by three, I get rid of all the fractions. This is always the, the most effective way uh, to um, work with equations with a bunch of fractions. Just multiply by the LCD, clear the fractions away, and then you'll have to deal with fractions for the rest of the equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. Again, three is the LCD. So now we're gonna go ahead and use our distributive property skills to clear these fractions. So three times negative four X is negative 12 X. Three times two thirds is two. Okay, so if you don't know how to multiply fractions, you need to review that. Three times one third is just one, okay, or one X or X. And then three times seven is 21. Okay, so at this point, I'm like, oh, much, much better. No more fractions. And now I can continue on getting all my variables to the left and all my numbers to the right. And we'll start with our variables first. We're going to move those variables over. So we're at this step right here, okay? So here's our problem. Let's move this x over to the left-hand side. So how can I do that? Well, I can subtract a negative, I can subtract x from both sides of the equation and notice how I'm writing it. You write it just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract x here, which is effectively moving it to this side. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I gotta do equally to the other side. So I have negative x, negative x, now I'm adding down in a column manner. So negative 12x plus a negative x, or negative 12x minus x is negative 13x. Since you're always adding down, two plus nothing is two. X minus x is zero, I don't need to write that, and 21 plus nothing is 21. All right, so now I got all my variables to the left-hand side, okay, there's no more variables. So now let's go ahead and move that, uh, all my numbers to the right-hand side. So I have this two, so let's get this two over on that side. So I'm gonna subtract two from both sides of the equation and then add down in a column manner. So negative 13x plus nothing is negative 13x. Two minus two is zero. I don't need to write that zero. And 21 minus two is a positive 19. So when I'm down to negative 13x is equal to a positive 19. So how do I solve for x? Easy, uh, we simply just need to divide both sides of the equation now by negative 13. So negative 13 divided by negative 13, of course, is a positive one or one X or X. That's what I want. That's the solution. And we have 19 over negative 13. So this is the final answer. 
Okay, so how many of you got this right? If you got this right, well, let me tell you something. That is impressive. I'm going to give you a nice happy face, an A plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, I'm so impressed. I'm going to give you a good old 1982 Mohawk uh, haircut. Okay, that was uh, considered pretty impressive way back in the good old days. But listen, nice job. Okay, uh, you know, this is uh, a problem that required several steps and plenty of opportunities to make mistakes. But you need to know how to be able to do this stuff, If again, if you're in any sort of algebra course, okay, whether that be pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, college algebra, intermediate algebra, and beyond. Uh, but listen, if you're struggling with this, don't panic, okay? But you need to kind of do something about this. So a couple suggestions. One, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel about equations, or again, check out one of my full math courses like pre-algebra or beyond. But if you got this right and you want to, you know, um, do more practice, don't just get overconfident. Be like, okay, this was one problem. I know I'm good with equations. Nah, don't get overconfident because there's a lot more challenging type of problems out there. So continue to practice. That's the only way you're going to get better in mathematics. But if this video helped you out, go ahead and consider smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. Again, I have over a thousand plus math videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, from basic math to advanced math, I calculus and everything in between. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.